Hi, Michael. Hi, Nicola. How are you? Oh, what are you thinking about? I want to compute this convex object. Looks nice. What exactly is it? It is the convex hull of these three ellipsoids. The general problem is to compute the convex hull of ellipsoids in three dimensions. Sounds interesting, but difficult to solve directly. Yes, indeed. But duality can help us. If you dualize the three ellipsoids, you get another three ellipsoids. They build a three-dimensional arrangement. In dual space, we have to compute the boundary of the cell that lies in the interior of each ellipsoid. The boundary of the intersection cell. Ho ho, wait a minute. That's a little bit too fast. At first, you should explain the concept of duality. Well, to understand how duality actually works, we should start with the two-dimensional problem. A point in the primal space corresponds to a line in the dual space, and vice versa. Oh yes, I remember. The dual of a point is a line, and the dual of a line is a point. But what do you do with an ellipse? Well, you take every point on the ellipse and dualize it. Now look what happens. Wow, every line is a tangent on the ellipse. But the dual of an ellipse isn't always an ellipse. Oh, you've got me. It depends on the relation between the ellipse and the origin in the primal space. The dual of an ellipse can also be a parabola or a hyperbola. Well, that shouldn't be the problem. But what about the convex hull? Okay, for example, take two ellipses in the primal space and dualize them. For a dual intersection point, we obtain a tangent on both ellipses in the primal space. Ah, in this case there are four intersection points. So we get four tangents. Every point on the boundary of the intersection cell gives rise to a tangent on the convex hull. So, what happens if you go up to the third dimension? Essentially nothing changes. Okay, so we want to determine the boundary of the intersection cell in the dual space. But notice that the only thing we can deal with is the implicit algebraic representation of the ellipsoids. For example, the red ellipsoid is the set of all roots of the red polynomial. Mm, yes, that's clear. But the spatial curves appearing as intersection curves between two ellipsoids don't seem to be easy to handle. Yes, unfortunately. For example, consider only the red ellipsoid. There are two intersection curves with the blue and the green ellipsoid. The blue and the green curves form an arrangement on the surface of the red ellipsoid. We have to compute this arrangement. You want to compute the arrangement with exact arithmetic. That means without rounding errors? Yes. But there's no rational parameterization of the spatial curves. Instead, we can orthogonally project the two curves together with the boundary of the red ellipsoid. This can be done using an algebraic tool called resultant. We obtain a two-dimensional arrangement containing all necessary information. In this step, we lose the spatial information. Hmm. I think that's not a real problem, because we can recover it with the help of ray shooting. Ok, I think that's a good formulation. But how do you want to compute a two-dimensional arrangement using exact arithmetic? The intersection points of two curves will in general have irrational coordinates. Indeed, that's a problem. For example, consider the blue and the green curve. Both are given by polynomials of degree 4. Ah, this is a result from the projection phase. But we cannot compute the common roots of the blue and the green polynomial directly. Instead, a resultant computation determines a univariate polynomial of degree 16. The x-coordinates of the intersection points of the blue and the green curve are roots of this polynomial. Hmm, everything you do is algebra. Yes, in the next step we isolate the real roots of the polynomial by a storm sequence computation. This gives us small stripes with rational x-coordinates that cover all intersection points. I see. I guess you do the same with the y-coordinates. Yes, and the intersection of the stripes gives us boxes with rational vertices that cover all intersection points. But most of the boxes are empty, in the sense that they contain no intersection point. How can we determine whether an intersection takes place inside the box or not? Our main tool is called box hit counting. What you look at are the intersections of the curves with the boundary of the box. For example, look at this box. There is no hit from any curve and therefore we know that it's empty. Or look here. We have two hits from the green and two hits from the blue curve and they alternate. 
That's why we can conclude that the two curves intersect inside the box. But I don't think that all boxes are as easy to handle. What do you do with this tangential intersection point of the red and the green curve? There are four hits with the boundary of the box, two with each curve. They don't alternate. The behavior of the curves at the boundary of the box doesn't allow any conclusion about a tangential intersection point inside the box. You are right. In some cases, box hit counting cannot give us an answer. Another example for this is self-intersection of the blue curve. I don't want to explain the handling of these events in detail now. In most cases, we succeed by introducing a new curve to the box and then again using box hit counting. The rest can be solved by applying a global criterion. Now we are able to compute the intersection cell. How does it correspond to the convex hull? As you may think, the dual of a 3D point is a plane. What about a triple intersection point, an intersection point of three ellipsoids? Its dual is a plane which is tangent to three ellipsoids. It touches each of the three ellipsoids in exactly one point. So a triple intersection point defines three points in a primal space and together they form a triangle. The orange area lying on the tangential plane bounded by the triangle will be part of the convex hull. Now look what happens with the yellow part of an intersection curve connecting two triple intersection points. Each point on the yellow curve dualizes to a plane that touches the green and the blue ellipsoid in exactly one point. The line between the two points belongs to the convex hull. All lines together form a developable surface connecting the two ellipsoids. So the convex hull consists of orange triangles, yellow developable surfaces and parts of the ellipsoids. 